Murkowski drives the lane. O'Neal meets him, misses the shot. Kick out, spoon for three. Basketball actually became my real coping mechanism. It was the only sport I could do by myself. Three-pointer, nothing but the bomb in the net. I never thought I would be able to play college basketball. Spoon for three, gets fouled, counting, go to the line for a four-point opportunity. were missionaries there with my grandparents who started a Bible school. And then when I was five, and in the year 2000, we moved to South Africa. I went to school in Afrikaans. My sister and I both did. Uh, played rugby, cricket, tennis. And it wasn't until we moved to the States when I was in seventh grade that I picked up a basketball. So we moved to the States, we moved to Denton, lived there for a year, and then moved to Breckenridge. And then attended Harden Simmons. I started playing in seventh grade, started playing football first, because that's a seasonal yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. And then we started playing basketball, and I was terrible. <laughs> I really was. I, I, I didn't know any of the rules. I'd never been exposed to it. Only watched the playoffs uh -huh. on TV in South Africa. So I couldn't make a left-hand layup or right-hand layup. I couldn't dribble, shoot. I didn't know whether I was right-handed or left-handed. Um, but I was, I was tall and lanky. That was the only thing I had going for me. And I was pretty coordinated. So I quickly caught on. But what it came down to was my coach, Coach Eddie, seventh grade year. Literally all we did was fundamentals. I mean, stuff that probably everybody thought was boring and basic. We learned how to pivot, how to correctly pass, shoot, dribble, uh, footwork, when you go up for a layup, jump stop. I mean, the whole shebang about basic basketball stuff, that's what we did with Coach Eddie all the time. I mean, there wasn't any flashy stuff at all. And I think that was, a great foundation for my growth as a player was Coach Eddie just pounding fundamentals into us every single day. And like I said, it was a, it was a great foundation, but I was just it, I, I was just so fascinated with basketball. I didn't care where it came from. Freshman year was the reason I I got good. You go from being the star in high school to sitting every single game mm -hmm. and you come in the last minute 30 seconds and jack it up and you hope you make it uh, but man freshman year was was like really where i i had to find myself um just as a person to you know you lose some of your identity of i was a basketball player and nobody knew i played basketball on campus because i never played sat on the bench the whole time but it was it was something that I had to go through in order to, to A, work hard and then just, or work harder, but B, just to, to grow, like for me personally, outside of basketball. Coach brought another, uh, brought a transfer in before the season ended. And I think that was a real, like, oh, holy smokes, like I better get it together and Man, all I did, because I had known, listen, this is what we're gonna run next year. I'm gonna get my shots in this spot. Literally all summer, I worked on the tiniest details, uh, footwork, how to, like different rhythms when I'm catching the ball. I mean, stuff that people would think, like, dude, what is, like if they came in the gym, they'd probably be like, dude, what is that guy working on? But the biggest thing for me was we went to Costa Rica actually that summer and we got to play and only I think eight players went from the year before so I I was able to get a lot of game time experience against grown men so 
For me, that that jump in Costa Rica was what I needed. I played well, and my confidence just soared from from then on because my, my my hard work had paid off, and I'd seen it pay off. And that's after Costa Rica was like, you know what? I I can make it. I can play. I'm better than people think I am. A great end to Caleb Spoon's basketball career. The Breckenridge graduate hit five three pointers to beat McMurray yesterday, putting his total at 266 more than anyone else in HSU history. So sophomore year, I tied the record. Mm -hmm. Sophomore year, and I was so mad that I didn't break it. Yeah. But I'm glad I didn't break it sophomore year, because summer, I just went into like complete obsession mode mm -hmm. about shooting, period. But my confidence was sky high going into junior year. And coach really put a lot of confidence in me. My teammates had a lot of confidence in me. They would literally get upset with me if I didn't shoot it. But, so, that year was just awesome. I mean, we played super well together, and my teammates were great. That's that's really why I broke that record, was my teammates were awesome. But when I broke it, I think I broke it against Concordia. And, you know, was it a home or a what? It was a home game. Okay. It was Good. it was super it, it was it was it was pretty dope. I broke it at home and came over the announcement. I didn't even know I did it until it came over the announcement and I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. I was super happy. I looked at my dad, he was uh, he was uh, he was super happy too and I just that was, that was a great moment just man, I, all that hard work that went into it. And then, I mean, I didn't know I was going to get 99, but I was just happy. I was just wanting to break the season record. And then when I got to 99 after the year, I was like, geez, that was a lot. Yeah. I think I thought I was going to really miss it after basketball. I thought I was really going to miss basketball once I was over, but I haven't. I, I gave everything that I could give to basketball. I obsessed over everything that I could obsess over. And I made awesome memories. We won. And I haven't missed it yet. We'll see once the season starts if I miss it. But I haven't missed it yet. So life's been really low key and super chill. I don't have to go to workouts anymore. But it's all on me now. Do you maybe have like a favorite like quote or like a favorite verse kind of? Um, I have a favorite quote. It's one I made up myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I made it up myself in high school. It was work in the dark so when the lights come on, everybody will know you've been in the dark. Yonder Mirror Show.